Hello and welcome to Forging the Characters. I'm Sean, your Forge Master, and today I'll be showcasing what Hero Forge can do when it comes to making character minis, walking you through ways to use advanced techniques and other tricks and tips in the character builder. Today I'm working on the minis for the upcoming campaign, A Divergent Dream, which will be DM'd by Ali. It will launch on the 27th of September at 6pm at twitch.tv forward slash RollTogetherRPG. The players have all provided me with minis that they have created this time around, so much of my job has been done for me. Uh, there are, however, a few tricks that I can use to make them pop just a little bit more, to make each Hero Forge mini stand out from one another, and also to sit together nicely as a group. So, without any further ado, let's get forging. Okay, so first up is Garnot. Um, Garnot is Josh's character in the campaign. And um, Josh has created this fantastic model. So um, there's very little that I want to do. Uh, Josh has done a great job. Um, I'm obviously going to have to tweak the base because, you know, that's always something that we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, Josh has gotten this model, um, leaned the sword nicely there. Um, I might push it a little bit closer just so that it rests less on the cloth, more kind of on the shoulder but um no like there's not there's really not a lot i can do you've even avoided too much clipping like this there's, there's always a little bit of clipping when you've got a customizable tool like this um but yeah um the way that garnet really kind of the, the pose really lends itself to um that kind of slightly relaxed but still um ready for for battle kind of pose um so yeah there's really there's not a lot that i'm gonna want to tweak um you know it's a great mini and i want you to be you know uh able to see a mini that has had very little done to it so um yeah here we go josh just just a few minor tweaks and then we'll um we'll call this one done So I will talk you through this because otherwise I'm not going to have anything to uh, to really talk about. Um, the bases are um, Ali asked for kind of um, soil. I think maybe that's too muddy. So I'm actually going to go back in and use the baked earth kind of thing. But I'm still going to use this texture um, if it remembers it. Um, just so that it has that kind of mud feel instead. So next on to the posing, and like I say, I'm not going to too much. Um, just want to just want to rest that sword a little bit more, obviously on the shoulder. There you go. I mean, that's that's it. Literally, all I've done is just twist the sword a bit so that I can move the hand and have the sword actually kind of resting on that shoulder. But I'm not going to do anything else to that one. I think uh, I think that's a mini to be proud of. So there you go. Job done. Moving on to Navri. Navri is played by V, and uh, Navri is a satyr bard. Satyr. Sat satire? Navri is a fawn. And um, again, uh, V has chosen a pose that um, kind of catches exactly what uh, she wanted it to. So. Um, I don't want to do too much to the general pose. Um, it's this kind of waving to uh, adoring fans behind her is uh, it's exactly what he was after. Um, one thing I will do is um, just the way that the loot is kind of being held, um, you know, because it's a kind of um, this, this, this pose is made so that it could be um, holding all sorts of different things. And I think 
I think we could be a bit more comfortable with the loot. Um, and then the other thing that uh, was mentioned is that they wear lots of kind of layers and, um, you know, flowing clothes. So I'm going to see whether I can do any tricksy um, layering another model inside, wearing another layer of kind of maybe smaller clothes just to, to bring out that aspect of um, mini layered clothing. Um, yeah, it's going to be another short one. So um, here we go. You might wonder why I'm putting a fish on the base. Uh, that is because I liked on um, Josh's model the, uh, the the little grass tufts. Um, however, if I tried to add the grass tufts, the grass tufts first, I won't be able to add the second character. So I have added a placeholder fish. The fish isn't staying. I just need to do the. I need to do the the pose shuffles for the loot before I can do uh, any relayering. Here we go. So I don't actually need too much of the other model. So um, we did have a little bit of kind of clipping around the arm. So I'm just going to remove the additional bits from the extra um, that we're not going to be using. Now, we can get to the actual fun bit of seeing what clothing we can layer under to give the impression of more layers. So I'm keen for it to not be visible through. I think I'm actually going to have to call this one a no-go. Um, going through, uh, none of the skirts are uh, going to just kind of be underneath the overlayer. Um, and I can't, with, without changing the proportions of the original mini um, to make the kind of uh, push the booty out and, and give more curves and that sort of thing. Um, I'm not going to be able to get the effect that I'm looking for. Um, as you can see, this whatever I choose um, still kind of clips through and, and shows that. So we're not we're not going to find anything that's a nice layer. Um, I think the underclothes are mostly like, yeah, leggings and um, breeches, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I don't really want to put you in boxer shorts. I think then um, I'm just going to remove the uh, the second mini and um, call her done. There you go. Very minimal tweaking to this arm, but other than that, captured your mon your your mini. Yes, all boy you want, all boy you lonesome. Job done.
Okay. Um, moving on to Sarah. Sarah, I'm assuming, is pronounced as if shouting because it's all in caps. Um, Sarah is an autonome. Um, so props to anyone who uh, had autonome down as the first of the Spelljammer races to be featured on stream. Um, I believe that uh, it will be Nat's, this one. Um, yeah, Sarah is Nat's character. Um, and uh, Nat, as we all know, is very good at making her own um, Hero Forge models. So there's not a lot that I can do. In fact, there's really nothing that I want to change about the pose. Um, I think that Nat has, um, you know, done done a good job. Um, I, I, you know, I might just tweak those hands a little bit so they don't um, clip through the back quite so much. But um, for the most part, I wanted to have a look at the color palette. Now, um, I'm not going to pretend to know tons about uh, color theory, by the way, um, but um, this is what uh, I've used kind of in, in the past. And it's when miniature painting in general, um, something that uh, a lot of people try and do is to have a spot color. So your palette may be, as in this instance, uh, black with purples, and there's even like a little red dot there. Um, and that, um, you know, that's that's all good. It's, it's, it's good to have kind of a style like that. Um, but by having a spot color, you just kind of draw out some of the tones a bit more. Um, and in order to determine what that is, I'm going to try a couple of different websites and see what uh, they see, see what they suggest. So you might be wondering why I'm in the booth. Uh, that is because I wanted to get rid of any extraneous colors that we didn't want to use. So I figured black and white would be safe just to make sure we could distinguish the outline. Um, but this first website, uh, I am on Coolors. Cool, coolers. Cool, it's cool colors, isn't it? Um, coolers.co. No, 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 no. Uh, I found it just by going uh, website color palette generator. Um, that'll be pretty high up at the top. Um, so, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use a snip that I've already taken of the previous um, mini, and I'm going to drop it into this and see what it comes up with. A uh, bit of an experiment, let's see. Um, okay, so, uh, so it's wanting us to just kind of, uh, uh, so, okay, so this might not necessarily be what I'm wanting. Uh, looks like this is, yeah. I'm having to do all the work. Um, but what happens if I... Okay, if I take those out. Yeah. Let's see what, let's see what it gives us anyway. Open in the generator. All right, so open in the generator and that gives us these. Now what I can do is I can lock. I like that one, I like that one. That's fast about these ones, I think. Maybe I'll lock that one just so that we've got some purples. And then I'm gonna press the space bar, ugh, which generates some other colors that will go with this. Um, so yeah, bright white and orange is an option. No. No. Almost spot on the first time round. So that's that's all right. It's helped us in one way because uh, we've picked out some of the colours and we've got the um it doesn't look like a hex coat to me. I oh, know it is. Um it's picked out the hex coats. Um I'm not gonna be using a bright old green. But what I can do, I've got this other website, which is one that I have used before, and that um, 
has all sorts of different ways of creating a set of five colors to um, to build your website around. Um, but it can also be used for painting models because they're still just colors. Um, so you've got several different options. Um, so uh, this is for uh, finding five colors that kind of complement each other in the same sort of side. Um, five colors that all sit on the same sort of line and you see that we've also got shades which is actually um even even more kind of um homing in on um that theory so you know we, we can move this up and down and uh, it's just changing the how well, the, the, well, the shade the, how much dark or light there is in that um we also have triad um, picking three main colors uh, complementary, which um, is the one I will be mostly focusing on. Um, so opposite sides of the colour wheel. So that one's suggesting green as well. So we might, might be alright with that. Uh, split complementary, giving us uh, five options. Double split, um, again, it, lots of different ways of um, dividing this out and finding colours that will um, sit nicely together in a um, in, in a palette. I'm going to go back to that complementary and yeah, I can change these tones. So if there's a palette color that I know I'm going to use, it's a 786, um, 786 We can stick that in here. And as you can see, it's already shifted around. Um, let's all right. Let's see what. Okay, so it's still it's still suggesting some greens. All right. Okay, I don't hate it. So I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna play with this. Uh, I'm gonna try and do some matching up uh, just I'm just going to tweak a little bit some of the colors just to see whether we can bring in some of this green and um, probably mostly in the base to be fair um, and then like I say uh, a couple of spot colors here and there just to put some of the uh, purples out and, and just um, pop them out a bit see how we do I'm gonna give this another go. Just see if see what it comes up with if I should pick out that blue. So maybe the trouble was that I picked out too many purples. Same again. Let's lock that one. Lock that one. Lock that one. And space bar. Let's see what this can give us. Maybe not. So I think I'm just going to bring a little bit of subtle group in. I know that seems like a lot of work for what turned out to be not very many changes. Um, I think just for the sake of getting those few little touches that will make other colors kind of stand up i think no. i think that works okay uh i am now going to work on winnow who is evie's character now uh, evie has given me um this character model that she's made um, Evie wasn't as confident as um, Nat or Josh on um, on Hero Forge, but uh, you know wanted to have a go to um, to kind of try and realise her character's vision. And I mean, she's done a great job already. So um, 
the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, try and realise some of the things that Evie um, struggled with. So in the character uh, description that Evie has given me, um, one thing that I noticed was that um, they wanted a... um, She she wanted, sorry, a... um, a top that kind of shows off the midriff, um, which uh, specifically a monk's uh, robes, like the one that's currently on the character. Um, and that's that's not something that currently exists. So I've got an idea of how I'm going to try and make that work. Um, it might not work, um, but I'm going to see if I can get that kind of clothing style without um, creating something too weird. Um, although they're changing, so it's fine. Um, and then the other thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the pose as well um, before I do anything else because I don't want to get too far down the line. Uh, the other thing is um, the character's supposed to be wearing a mask, and um, the face at the moment is kind of like what the mask would look like, but applied to the the face as a whole. So I'm gonna try and make it look more like a mask, and um, and then. Yeah, see if we we can kind of have the best of both worlds. Uh, that's enough talking. Let's see if we can pull this off. So, I was having a look at some of the um, the the basic poses. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly good um, in most cases. Uh, none of them are fully shouting at me at the moment, though. So. I'm looking in the community library, which is a pro feature. Um, Definitely recommend pro if you can get hold of it, um, because there are lots of fun things you can do. Now, um, I've searched for the term monk, um, because I'm kind of specifically looking for things that that I I think I want to bring out a kind of slightly martial aspect. Um, And there are some very cool, that's awesome with the nunchucks there, uh, there's some very cool poses out there. Um, I don't really want something that features weapons too heavily. That's very cool by Monster B. Monster B02. So, as always, <clears throat> when you're importing a pose, you go down to the little corner that you can't see because of my face. You go to Import, which is a pro only feature. And then I specifically want to import the pose. So yeah, you, you can see it's a kind of standing at the ready with a kind of martial arts-esque. Yeah, I like that, I really like that. Uh, and then accept. So, I keep the torso only glitch on hand for a variety of reasons because um, it's just it's it's very useful, um, if nothing else. Um, now, I do want it to more or less look like um, Winnow. So, let's see if this works. So, I'm going to my own characters, or rather roll together RPG's characters. And I'm gonna use the import on features from my own character. So from winner to the extra. Cool, so apart from having to deselect the shoes, and just change the face to something else that we want. Uh, We've basically got a legless version of the original character, and that's going to be important for a reason that we'll see soon. And I'm going to have to tweak with this event and kind of work out what works. Uh, Let's see how we get on.
Okay. So... Because I couldn't bring in the species um, stuff, the character obviously doesn't have the same proportions. So I'm going to have to change the arms around. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust the height. I was going to adjust the height anyway, because my plan is to have the proportions, so like the torso be a bit bigger on one of the options. Um, and the um, other one to be um, wearing the... Uh, I, I, I don't know which way around it will be yet, but one, one will be wearing the clothes and be a bit taller so that the cutoff of the monk's robe will be a bit higher and hopefully expose that midriff. Let's see. So in order to hide any excess height, I'm going to have to increase the upper scale of the main. I want to do that as subtly as I can. Because I don't want to adjust the proportions that Eve is given too much because she's obviously gotten the model to place where she likes it. But, I, you know, just to try and achieve the other goals, I've got to kind of make some sacrifices. I can see that this isn't going to work. Um, my hope was that by increasing the height, I could um, raise that waist level up um, and that I might be able to keep the proportions in more or less the same place if I just increased the upper scale um, on the main. But I think even if I were to put the upper scale right up, which yeah, it's going to just significantly change the silhouette of the model. Um, it's just, it's not a significant enough change to make the, yeah, see like that's upper scale at its max and we've got a little bit of extra height on the um, torso. So I think for the moment on that, I'm going to have to admit defeat. Uh, and I'm going to undo so that we get back to Evie's original proportions. So I continued with what I was doing because I have a secret other agenda. And that is... Um, to use the other torso to create that mask um, just by leaning the heads forward slightly um, so that it pokes out the front um, I think I'm gonna have to sort something out with those that arm torso though because it's not quite the desired effect Now here, we start the slightly trickier operation of moving that front head out and trying to keep the features more or less in line. Experiments just aren't working today. Um, I hoped I could lean the face forward and out, but it's not really working. So let's take a different tact. I'm going to increase the size of the head to stick out. Hmm. 
think it's just one of those days. Uh, I don't think that that looks anything like what I'm hoping it would. Um, I was hoping there would be a more definite break between the heads, but you can still see the painted whiteness there. All it's doing is glitching on the uh, through the hair. Okay. Let's undo that. Didn't do that on purpose, but I seem to have accidentally managed what I was failing to do when I was doing it on purpose. Um, I managed to hide the secondary figure in there enough that it's given me that little edge. So now it looks properly like I'm not going to knock it. I'm just going to save and move on. What I am going to do is I'm going to just try and make this area of skin a bit darker to create more of a um, shadow and a more obvious lip for the mask. I'm also going to get rid of the eyebrows. Um, if you did say that she made this as a kind of amalgam of the face and the mask, um, so I think if the mask is working, we can probably afford to um, uh, just make it look like the mask now. Don't knock it. Sometimes you just have to play with it until it does what you want, whether it's the way you thought it was going to work or not. The second thing that uh, Evie asked me to do is just to um, try having like a eldritch claw uh, on the t the tattooed arm. That is a, a I think it's just called eldritch claw tattoo. Um, so, another reason for keeping um, my second figure, although it's probably actually easier with a double arm. Yeah, I'll do a double arm, actually. So I've been experimenting with a variety of ways to um, create this Eldritch Hand. And basically, I just need to um, include a variety of extra hands. And I've got the opportunity to have up to six if I wanted. Uh, I think one more, though. Um, I tried the Flaming Hands before, but I felt too big. So I'm going to try it on the extra body, um, but by reducing the weight of the arms and hoping that that um, reduces some of it. And as a last resort, I might also try reducing the um, 
uh, length of the arms, but we'll see what happens. might be wondering why I did that. Um, one of the reasons I like to use the body and theme paints is just to make sure that everything has a colour and then I will normally go in and change everything. But uh, it just kind of separates out areas and means you don't have to make the fiddly little choices of where, what parts you make, make the same colour and such. Um, not everyone likes to do that. Some people like to paint their model as they go. Um, the the, the difficulty I find with that is that it's really easy to um, accidentally miss things. Um, so I've coloured everything in bright pink uh, just to see which bits have been missed. So um, I'm going to recolor some of these. So I'm now using uh, one of our saved colours. Uh, if you're a pro, you can save colours that you particularly like um, in your own library. Um, and this is one that I think Chris found. I didn't find this one. Um, it's called Matrix Code. Well, Ma Matrix Code 1, 2, and 3. So I've got a few options. Um, let's see how that goes. I'm going to try and make it look like the Eldritch tattoo is what's enveloping the hand. Um, I want to do that by um, adapting this. So first I'm going to create a copy of it and place that onto the tattoo. And then I'm going to open up the colors. And that mid one seems to be the one that's creating the darkness. So I want this to now match the red of the tattoo. There you go. One minnow replete with distinct mask and Eldritch Claw hand. Okay, um, so the last of the player characters is Lazar. Maybe Laser. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I haven't seen any uh, recorded footage yet. So um, uh, Lazar, as I'm going to call them, is Nathan's character. And uh, Nathan has used uh, one of the kind of quite uh, static, like the, the base pose. Um, so my intention is to pull a bit more of the character into this one. Um, Lazar is a cleric and uses the lantern as a um, spellcasting focus. So my intention is to try and highlight that a bit and uh, kind of make that the focal point. Uh, maybe even bring in a floating spell effect, uh, but I'll see how I get on. Here we go. Um, what I'm doing now is just looking for these colours. Now these uh, tend to be on decals um, and they're a right nuisance. They don't have as nice... I, I, don't, I don't like the um, the hues of them really. Like they're, they're all a bit too similar. Um, and I know that's deliberate, but... Uh, so yeah, I like to make sure that I've gotten rid of them. And the best way to do that is to um, paint the rim of the base in that colour. And then use another colour that is going to be obvious and stand out and use fill to just kind of try and see where those are. I'm thinking that there's lots of tattoos or something underneath the 
armor, which must be where these are coming from. So literally, I'm just gonna slowly get rid of them. So again, why make my own pose entirely from scratch when there's a whole uh, community library available? So I'm just going to see if anyone's making a decent uh, lantern. So this is probably going to be the one using the kind of holding up like that pose, the, the one that I think I used for the very first old Georgie mini. Um, but, you know, and um, is that one? We might find something that's um, that we've not thought of. So it's always worth having a look if you end up making it yourself anyway. So this is by Declan. Must have gotten in there quick with your username. Um, so again, you can't see it, but I'm going to import, which then takes me to this screen and I only want the pose hmm now that I get to rotate it that's not really one after okay okay this uh, cobalt explorer um, I spotted it at the, at the start by thought I'd just see what else was there uh, but this that's exactly what I think we, we wanted to uh, by Vandroid so again just clicking the little up chevron I'm going to import and again we just want to click pose Okay, so to make the floating object glitch work, first thing we need to do is create a copy. And then that copy must be armed with whole arms. So again, go to import, import the pose, and we now have several flying spell effects that we can play with. Now, I don't know which one's going to work better because really I'm going to need to hide them in the torso. But let's see how we get them. So I'm going to have to choose between the pose and the magic effect. So... I won't remove any arms for now, but this fireball here is the one I like the most, but... I'm struggling to get it in any 
better a position than where it is now. Could do it through some sort of like underhanded lantern effect, but I don't like it. What I will do, however, is I will stick a light in there. off I'm going to um, work on an NPC because I didn't get to make anything from scratch so I talked to Ali about uh, any uh, NPCs who are going to be important to the campaign so this is Mr. Kazel they are a uh, portal as you can see um, and Ali provided me with this art uh, which is kind of a close starting point um, but then um, I've also got some, um, uh, you know, tweaks and stuff to describe what their actual um, look will be. Um, the main thing is to try and get a spiky shell rather than a, um, uh, a smooth one, as is the current back uh, like shell, shell item. So I'm going to use my favourite trick of um, bringing in good old legless and um, put an item on that on, on their back so that it's closer it, it's clearly not a shield it's it's actually on um, but we will see how that goes Just so you know what I'm doing, not just examining a turtle's ass. Um, it just felt a bit weird not having some sort of little tail, uh, but there isn't really a short lizardy tail. Um, I'm just not sure that it'll work trying to kind of wrap one up. And like, you know, it's a long tail is not going to look not going to look right in the slightest. So I'm trying the bunny tail, and I wanted to see if I could have more than one, but uh, I can only have one of this particular tail. Um, I could have more of this one. I'm going to try wrapping a spiny one just, just to see if I can get it to work, but I think I'm probably I just stick with that bunny one and hope it's all right.
whatever I do, it's not. It's just going to end up looking like a thong. So I can use the original tail that I had planned. And now I have to choose which from which. So from the main to the extra, the pose, just to get them in the same. I think it's the best of both worlds. Last thing I think's missing. Ali said that they're wearing a couple of fancy items like the monocle and um, the waistcoat. The head's looking bare. So I'm going to find a little fancy hat. There we go. Our uh, spiny shelled, slightly fancy tort. Hang on. That's all we have time for. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this episode of Forging the Characters. Um, these are the characters for Divergent Dreams, um, which will be um, streaming very, very shortly. Um, I hope you enjoy the campaign. And until next time, happy forging.